afternoon in Hawaii, but Sunday night in South Dakota, where I usually go live from. Welcome to Sunday night. I am not going to lie, I am not minding the weather here <laughs> in Hawaii. And I'm super excited to come to you tonight and give you hopefully some hope and some peace about what's happening to our world. So again, I have sent the kids down the beach uh, just because that's too loud when they're in the room with me. So uh, if you can hear me, uh, thank you very much. The one who just said, Brad, thank you for telling me you can hear me. Again, someday I'm going to have a show where I have a producer and they can help me with all the little things that go wrong, even when I'm in Hawaii. Uh, I have uh, been thankful that uh, my computer, which totally crashed two days ago, I'm here in Hawaii. I, I almost thought it was my husband saying, shut down, <laughs> shut down, stop. <laughs> but it is, um, it is great to be with you. And I'm hoping that resolution uh, keeps, you, know, you have light behind you, you're going to have some darkness in your face. So I guess that's, that's what we got. I bet you I could turn on the light. I don't know if that would help. We'll try this for a little while and see how it goes. <clears throat> well, so I want to hear where you're from. And just like we did last week, if you can share updates of where your uh, community is at when it comes to the coronavirus, I think it's helpful to see one another's struggles. Uh, what... I think about when you know, we have a, a, a keto group that I run in my community that happens on Friday morning and from 3 o'clock a.m. in Hawaiian time on Friday I dialed in to lead our little keto group because together when you share the stresses and I don't care if it's I ate carbs or what's going to happen to my grandkids there was a sharing story about the nerves of what happens with children or myself or when um, the, the world of uh, stress hits. And that's what a community is all about. Um, so many times I have shared that the opposite of being addicted to something, and in this situation I think carbohydrates is what we're talking about, uh, is a community. And that's because you're never going to find a time when the stress doesn't affect you. Uh, that stress is shared when you're in a community. So on Friday at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2.30, uh, I woke up, set up the stuff, and uh, in my pajamas, <laughs> dialed in to lead our local support group for a keto group and just found it so helpful for me too, uh, to share where you're at and uh, what the community uh, around you has had for viruses uh, and quarantines. Um, I'm going to check my number here. Uh, I, didn't, I did not fast last week. I'm going to show you my Instagram here in a minute. For those of you that don't follow, I think it's a great way to bridge you into sharing your keto journey. Um, I actually just saw a hi from Haiti, uh, and it really reminds me. I've spent a lot of time in Haiti and done uh, some awesome soul searching that happened. I didn't mean for it to happen there, but it really did. And I just want to say hello to the person who said, uh, hi from Haiti. I'm in Hawaii, and I keep saying, I'm in Haiti. <laughs> it feels like Haiti compared to South Dakota. It looks uh, as sunny and beautiful as Haiti was to me. Um, but I'll tell you some updates here from Hawaii, and that is that it's the first state to lock their borders. <laughs> and um, I am on the inside. <laughs> my, my family, my, my son goes to school here, and when they closed his school, we looked at coming to visit him, and by golly, the prices couldn't be beat. Um, again, I'm checking my numbers here. We're going to go through this again today. Um, but so we got everybody on a plane, and this kid's local school was canceled because in South Dakota. Uh, so yeah, this is the ketone still counting down. My sugar is 95. Um, and I, I was going to say, I bet my ketones are not above one. I have been um, not, not cheating as much as I am not uh, sticking to my one meal a day, which I've been at for such a long time, but vacation, which isn't what, the, I don't know if you call that this anymore, <clears throat> because in Hawaii, we have locked, the governor has locked the borders that anybody coming in has to wait two weeks in quarantine, um, and um, I, I think I think that starts on the 26th, but it, 
I don't know, the newspaper has it all over the headlines today. So we're in <laughs> Hawaii, or yeah, Hawaii, not Haiti. <laughs> All right, so uh, if you can share how many, um, how many in your community have been infected, I think it's just a nice way to show what's going on across the country. Uh, it's also a way to mark in time what, um, what has happened. One of my uh, nervous habits, not nervous habits, I just don't sit still very well. So last night I had done some writing in my book for the first time in a while, and um, the <clears throat> I was frustrated and there was a movie on so I sat <laughs> and watched the movie and I braided my hair because <laughs> it was like frizzy uh, and so I call this my Haiti hair because <laughs> this is what I did when I was in Haiti is I just had these lovely ladies braid it because it gets just super curly <clears throat> and it doesn't do this at all in South Dakota <laughs> so I'm like oh just turn into it and let it be curly so if you uh, look around, the, I think many of you know I have three sons, and we have a ex foreign exchange uh, daughter from, who's been with our family for two years. Uh, her family's from central China, so we've watched very closely what's happened in Wuhan in that area. Uh, she's uh, uh, from Chengdu, which is a neighboring state, if you would, to uh, um, Wuhan. And oh my goodness, uh, <laughs> for the first time, it is safer to be in her area, in her home country, than it was in any of the states. So her parents are like, we just looked at the numbers, and the numbers in Hawaii are higher than they are in South Dakota. So a few pictures of just our family hunkering down, watching movies. I think I've played more cribbage games than I've played with my sons in their whole life. Uh, and we had a, some time on the beach where we buried one of the kids on the, <laughs> in the sand, and I, um, I crashed into, uh, I don't know if you can see the, always uh, crashed into the coral while trying to snorkel and miscalculating that there was a big reef right there. Uh, but again, just staying very connected with the people that we love and we know. But isolation is not going to disappear anytime soon. Uh, my foreign exchange daughter's family has been quarantined for two and a half months now. And they all are working from home. They, she has... Uh, a little sister who is like first or second grade and they can't go to school. <laughs> so it, that's just a lot. Uh, they have finally reached, um, according to their news, the fact that there is no, um, no new cases. And that took two and a half months of quarantine. And her family has literally been in their home, in their little apartment in, uh, you know, Chengdu, um, for two and a half months. So I, I just give you that foreshadowing to tell you that um, we're going to talk about what things that you can improve and some of the things that I uh, really have uh, grown to um, embrace. One of them is finding what comforts you and uh, not letting that be carbohydrates during this time. So I am going to do a little review from last week. Um, I had uh, a, a big update last week on just how viruses work. Uh, I also have, for the first time in my life, said, I just need a producer. <laughs> because I started last week's show after practicing it with my kids, but I started saying something. And of course, there's nobody to give feedback that I'm saying the wrong word. And I said the wrong word all the way through the, the show last week. Um, I was talking about viral replication and how viruses um, where they, they have to replicate inside a cell or inside a, a being. Except when I was live, I kept saying that's where they live. And it's weird because viruses kind of, I mean, they're viruses, so living is weird. Um, to, living is kind of like replicating, but, and I'm sure that's just kind of where my brain was going was the replication phase. But I never said the word replicate. I always said the word they live. <laughs> so I should, I have an editor who's, not near his computer, that we're going to try and go back and just stamp over <laughs> the, the mistake made where viruses do replicate inside cells. They are wimpy little things to get rid of, um, but they do uh, live on surfaces for a short period of time. They do have um, a, a, a lifespan inside a water droplet that's aerosolized, um, but it's very small. It's very tiny amounts of time. 
And that's what the six feet distances are about when it comes to uh, viral uh, spreading and giving our social distances is that if it's in the air and you're six feet away, the chances you're going to inhale enough viruses to cause an infection is really low. So there you go. Uh, that's my, my ah, cleanup. I swear I'm not uh, Hawaiian because I don't know how to keep these little flowers in your hair. I think they need a bobby pin, but I don't see any of the other ladies using that. They just plop it in their ear and it seems to stay. Maybe I need a stem on it or something. Anyway, it's really pretty, isn't it? <laughs> So I will uh, get to some of the stuff. Today's title is, can you measure? Can you measure your stress and how your immune system is functioning? And um, of course, that's a little bit of a lead in to say, yep, you can. Um, and then how quickly would it, will it take to change that stress? We have a couple of studies I'm going to go through. And we have a few... Um, um, tools that I think you'll appreciate. I do want everybody to notice that I checked my numbers at the beginning of this uh, live and I left my water sitting over on the counter so I'm not going to be able to have a drink during this but I don't have any <laughs> supplements or any uh, BHB here in, in uh, Hawaii um, but I do have um, an immune system that makes way more ketones than a supplement could ever make and we're going to talk about that as we look through today. So I'm going to go to my slideshow, and we're going to talk about how do you unpack um, a, an immune system that is um, under question, and can we look closer at where your body is at, and how would we improve that? So um, I do want to make a couple of announcements. When you are watching this, I've had lots of feedback in the last week saying some people don't like these long lives, and... That's just how I do it, but there is a, we do have clips on another playlist in here, so it's called The Best of Dr. Boz, and they're just 20, under 15 minute clips of these shows. So if you like the shorter versions, you can go to that playlist, um, and we'll keep putting those out, clipping them, and adding to that list for those that have a, just a shorter um, preference. Okay, so let's take um, this image and... I am going to uh, find this fella. There we go. Okay, so I am going to go here. Uh, oops, I got to take that away. It's a good thing I clicked on that first. Uh, that's the study we're going to go through in a minute. I got to take that away. Um, let's see. Um, come on, where is that other one? And keynote here. Okay, thanks for the forgiveness there. Uh, I should have had that set up before I started, but again, I'm sure if I had a producer, they would have reminded me of that. Okay, so let's uh, take a look. So this is uh, the ketones, stress, and immunity. And I really want you to take a look at... Um, your own numbers throughout this uh, story. And if you don't check your numbers, first of all, I'm gonna encourage you to find a way to do that, especially in times such as these. Um, last week, we did talk a lot about cytokines. These are the little hormones between white blood cells that send out the signal uh, for whether or not you have an infection. Uh, when people have overabundance of cytokines, they are known for increased risk of uh, cancer, increased risk of infection, increased autoimmune, their, their immune system stops attacking foreign, or it, 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 it still attacks foreign, but it does it very poorly because so much energy is also put towards attacking their own body. Autoimmune problems include things like a thyroid uh, being attacked by your immune system, your um, rheumatoid arthritis is one, lupus is where it attacks blood vessels, um, Crohn's disease is where it attacks your intestines. All of those are cases where the immune system kind of went haywire. And instead of attacking foreign and invaders, it's attacking your own cells. Um, when we look for cytokines, we talked last time about how they really do matter. And they are not regulated when you are diabetic, when you're overweight, specifically getting to that high obese level. 
when you have depression or anxiety, cytokines definitely cause depression, anxiety. They also are worse when you um, have high levels of cytokines. Autoimmune problems, cancer, elderly, um, increased uh, uh, smoking and vaping, and it, those toxins coming in through those beautiful membranes of your lungs cause an immune response and an inflammatory response. And heavy amounts of alcohol all um, turn into a highly unregulated or less regulated um, cytokine setting. So if you want more about that, you can go to last week. Uh, I ended last week by saying if it's a virus your body's trying to fight off, you've got this little activated plasma cell. It takes in those little uh, viruses, cuts it up into little pieces, puts out a little flag on the edge of its cell and said, all right, we need to find cells like this. And it sends the cytokines to um, improve, to find, uh, sends the cytokines in, into a cell that's infected. And that's how... Um, TNF-alpha is one of the cytokines. Uh, I've talked about this on my cancer uh, uh, lecture, but it's in the uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha. That cytokine is what makes you have a fever, uh, what causes you to not want to eat when you're infected, when you have inflammation. It also inhibits the growth of tumor cells uh, and causes programmed cell death. Uh, when you look at other dysregulation, when things don't go so well, when you have lots of years of high cytokines is when we know there's an increased risk for Alzheimer's, increased risk for cancer, increased risk for major depression, psoriasis, and inflammatory bowel disease is another one of those autoimmune problems. So psoriasis is also, I, I sometimes skip that one, where your immune system attacks the skin cells and you're, you're not, it's not regulated, it's not doing what it's supposed to. This is what happens when ketones move in, and uh, then we ended last week saying, um, what is it that we could do to improve a, um, uh, an immune system? And we're going to get to what I like to call and what has been affectionately called the Dr. Boz ratio. Now, I have some of my colleagues who make fun of this because they think that I came up with this. And although I came up with the calculation, sorry, my, my stand is not very stable today, um, I, I didn't come up with the name. It has stuck and it works, so I use it now, but that wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, so this is when you look at your blood glucose and you divide by your blood ketones. Uh, this ratio, I did not make up the data. I used the data from the protocols where they are um, setting up uh, a treatment plan for people with cancer, people with seizures, and they use these blood markers to say, have we reached a metabolism? Have we reached an energy um, uh, and signaling level that changes inside uh, cell division, uh, immune systems, seizures, brain function. Uh, at, this is what I used when my mom had cancer. I was following a protocol for cancer patients. So what are we really measuring when you look at a Dr. Boz ratio? If uh, you look at blood glucose and ketones, um, these, uh, the higher your Dr. Boz ratio, the higher your insulin level is. And um, checking this once doesn't give you much insight. Like today, my number was somewhere in the 95 range, and I had a ketone of 0.6, so that puts me about, what, 180 or something on uh, Dr. Boz ratio. But So that says my insulin is a little high. I haven't been limiting my uh, eating as well as I usually do. But I know with hundreds, maybe thousands of times that I've checked my number, that this will come down quickly. As much as my insulin may be high for this moment, over time I can lessen that. And I spend more time with a normal to low insulin. You know, normal is low, but it's, it looks low compared to the rest of the world. So we say low, but we really mean normal. <clears throat> when you look at ketones, um, as we measure them though, uh, we can do, the reason the protocol was written the way it was has a lot to do with autophagy. And I've given a big uh, lecture on that. There's a chapter and a blog post all about autophagy out there. Um, one of the key things to autophagy is that you can spark cells to, to begin the cleanup within their, within their internal borders. Uh, much like you can spark a cell to have programmed cell death, you can spark a cell to start autophagy. Uh, now, you can't just run a test for that. You have to have low insulin. Um, it, there is a, um, a process uh, that doesn't, um, 
it's, it, it's not like there's a blood test that says, here, measure autophagy. It's a series of numbers that say, what, are, what is your glucose level and what is your insulin level? And um, we, looking at the literature, saying, okay, if the Dr. Boz ratio is 80, you might get autophagy. Uh, autophagy would also correlate to improving your white blood cell function and whether or not your immune system is responding as appropriately or as efficiently as it could. Um, we know that at 80, you'll get weight loss. That's for sure. So if you're after weight loss uh, and you get a ratio under 80, you win. Um, I really like the number 40, and that's what I reach for every week while on uh, Instagram. You'll see me post my numbers, uh, and I am doing that for, again, autophagy, but also making sure my immune system, I'm a physician, I work around lots of infected people, uh, and I like to have the confidence to know that my immune system, uh, my immune system is my livelihood. If I am sick, I can't, I can't see patients um, without hurting them. I secretly think my husband knew we were going to get trapped in Hawaii where I don't have a medical license because the, 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 the pull I have to help people during this crisis is um, it's, it's, uh, it's part of my soul. And I am now in Hawaii where I can't do that. Um, but if you get under 20, which is what the goal for my, my mother was when she was fighting cancer. Now, remember, her cancer was in her white blood cells. Her immune system was terrible. Uh, she might have been 71, but uh, her functional age was probably north of 90, maybe close to 100 years old because she couldn't fight off infection. She had a very wilted brain. Her energy was awful. She was sleeping at least 20 hours a day. Um, and to get her autophagy back, uh, we had to do some incredible things in that story. You'll know that those of you that have read the book know that she fasted for 40 days with one fourth of a cup of bone broth. And what happened in those 40 days is amazing. Um, but she didn't start out there. She had been keto for nine months before that part of the story happened. And I really push patients to say, yes, we want you to lower your insulin. Yes, that's how we could predict if your immune system is working good, better, or best. Um, but having a, a blood sugar of 140 and a ketones of 0 0.7 gives you an insulin or a Dr. Bob's ratio of 200. That's not what your insulin level is, it just reflects that it's higher insulin. Um, when you get a blood sugar of 120 and your ketones are only 0.8, then you're around 150. Uh, that your blood sugar of 80, ketones of one is 80, pretty easy math there. And if you get the really good blood sugars of 68 um, and your ketones are 1.7, now you have a ratio of 40. But it takes even a greater blood sugar of 68 uh, and then a ketones over three to get an insulin or a Dr. Boz ratio of 20 or less. And that is where the fastest replication of improvement happens. Um, and I do not let patients reach for this until they've been practicing a ketogenic journey for a while. So let me just explain this because some of you have heard this a couple of times. We have lots of new people on the show. Uh, this is my image for evil insulin. And yes, I demonize insulin. Insulin, although it saves your life, it is very important for life. Uh, most of the people I see make excessive amounts of insulin. And when they do that, uh, it causes inflammation. It causes cells to replicate with errors. It has an increase in their um, uh, free radicals, in their electrons that are not carefully tucked into where they belong. So in this example, I'll just show you the origin of how this happened. We were reaching for a glucose ketone index uh, of one to one for my mom. Uh, that would be the perfect number if you have cancer, right? So, but what we have to do is, so her, so here's an example of glucose being 97, but that's milligrams per deciliter. And her, if, you're, if you take glucose divided by 18, you will convert it to the other metric, which is millimoles per liter. Ketones are measured in millimoles per liter. And so if the ketones are 1.2, that Dr. Boz ratio, 97 divided by 1.2, is 80. But the glucose ketone index, which is what we were trying to do with my mom, is you take 5.3, and it is millimoles per liter, and then the ketones at 1.2 millimoles per liter, so you've got the same units. But now you have to reduce the ketone to 1. So you have to take that 5.3 and divide by 1.2 to get uh, 4.5 to 1. <laughs> I'm telling you, my mother, yeah, remember I said she was like 100? Uh, not doing that. Holy mackerel, is she mad? <laughs> not just mad, she was just like, you've got to be kidding. What are you talking about? Uh, so 
a couple of days of trying to get her to do the math, and I just said, okay, mom, let me convert this to take the glucose, divide by the ketones, and that's going to be the number we use. So that's where the origin of this came from, and it really did grow. It is much easier for Americans, and it's the same data. Um, you're just using the metrics in a little different way. So again, here you have a glucose of 100. You divide by 18, that's 5.5. Again, that's how you convert from milligrams per deciliter to millimoles per liter. Ketones are already in millimoles per liter. That's a Dr. Boz ratio of 66. Again, from anything under 80, we know you're losing weight. Um, that glucose ketone index, the 5.5 to 1.5 is now reduced to 3.7 to 1. And again, I get that the numbers are ridiculous, but so many people have asked, how do I do this Dr. Boz ratio? What is this? And I will tell you, it is measurable. Uh, and one number isn't what you get. Uh, you don't like suddenly arrive at one number. Um, follow me on Instagram, you'll see what I do when I fast. But when I first started out, I probably checked um, two to three times a day. And when, when Grandma Rose was sick, we checked several times a day. Ah. Um, when I look at the, uh, the next one is, uh, again, a glucose of 88, which is 4.8 in the other metrics, and the ketones are 1.1. The Dr. Boz ratio is 80, and that is a 4.4 to 1 ratio. Again, probably just weight loss. So immune repair takes more. You have to have higher ketones and a little lower glucose to get that number under 40. Uh, I reach for that once a week and know that when my body hits that, the number of cells that just ignited autophagy is a new crop from last week. Hitting that every week was what I did, was what I've done for the last couple of years. Um, I did not post them, I did not fast last week. <laughs> um, time zones in my brain did not do well. I just was like, what? Oh gosh, today's Monday, I ate. Anyway, so um, this is just a representation of what brains start out like. And when you look at the number of things that we can improve in uh, a ketogenic diet, the data behind this is what is impressive. And the number of studies looking at Alzheimer's, migraines, multiple sclerosis, mood, uh, irritable mood, focus, headaches, sleep troubles, anger, um, traumatic brain injuries, anxiety, Parkinson's. I put math on there because it could be a syndrome if you're, if you're really sick. <laughs> Um, but what I like patients to look at is if you want to improve your immune system, um, having a, a, an immune system where you measure, that is the key to looking inside how, how is your body doing. I strongly recommend that you check first thing in the morning. As the day goes on, lots of parts of the equation become unpredictable. They're hard to control for. So there's a much better uh, process and much better uh, confidence in the number when it's first thing in the morning. Like, I mean, when you're emptying your bladder, sit there on the toilet and check your number. Um, that's the best number. When you look further into the day, there's just so many variables. Have you eaten? Did you chew gum? Uh, did you take some medications? What's your stress level? Uh, you know, the, the, the variables become so numerous that it's hard to make sense of it. When I go to break my fast, I rarely break it with numbers in the evening. I want those numbers to be achieved probably before 2 o'clock in the afternoon. If I don't reach my goal of a Dr. Bob's ratio of 40 or less by about 2 o'clock, I really try not to count uh, anything after that. I just wait till the next morning. I've been doing this for a while, though. So if you're new to the ketogenic diet, you know, waking up one day with um, – an improved ratio, uh, that doesn't just happen. Uh, so in, in uh, the show notes below, you're, you'll see um, one of the links called Toxic Traditions. And this is a, um, to sign up and be on the list for those who will get the first announcement when I, when I do a course that I thought I was going to finish recording while in South Dakota this week, but I don't know, I don't know how I'm going to do that now. Uh, but I've got, you know, two-thirds of it recorded already, uh, and the course is the curriculum that I've been using for my, my book coming up called Keto Continuum. Again, when ketones are circulating in your blood, um, great things happen, and if you've all done this for a couple of days or maybe a few weeks, and you had awesome results, and you hit your goal, and then you had a carb celebration, and the road back to ketosis seems like a hike across the Himalayas, I mean, it's just long. So looking at that keto, 
that keto continuum is really what I am trying to be an advocate for, creating uh, uh, community groups that are open sourced, free, doing as much as I can do for free to help uh, inspire those groups and um, promote them in, within our communities. And I contend we will help more people uh, improve their health by showing them how to consistently be keto, uh, which is what the course is about. It's also um, uh, some of my, I don't know, best tips and tricks, if you would. Uh, some of them I've covered on here, not all of them. Some of them are just longer stories, so it takes a while to unpack them. But I'd like you to look at this. Beginners are the first column. Advanced is in the second column. Um, these are just a, time, a, 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 a transition of where you can progress this to go. And I would, I, I'll show you a little bit more about this in a minute. Um, I didn't know that I was going to do that. <laughs> Uh, so yes, the key that I want you to know is if you're going to try and improve your immune system, if you're going to say, I'm going to be in isolation for maybe up to two months, you could exit isolation with some of the best white blood cells you've ever had, but you have to be measuring in order to do that. There's a link in the show notes for Foracare. Uh, they actually have Dr. Ba's ratio programmed into their uh, mobile app, so you don't even have to do the math. They've been just really big supporters of uh, teaching people, promoting how to improve health, and being very supportive by giving anybody who uses the Dr. Boz um, um, DRBOZ uh, promo code, you get a 10% discount. Um, I will tell you it's uh, about $100 for the kit once you get the 10% off, and it is the best $100 to help your immune system. It is more powerful than a visit with me could be. So start with knowing your numbers. Uh, for those of you uh, engineers out there, there, is, there are show notes out there that um, a, a link in there called the spreadsheet. I had one of my favorite patients who built this saying, here's how he plots his, uh, his data. Uh, so you don't have to build the spreadsheet. You can just fill it in, download the spreadsheet. Uh, that is also in the show notes below. So if you love keeping track of things, um, I don't take on any patient unless they've got a spreadsheet they've been working with so I can look over time what their numbers have been. And the truth is, is once they start studying themselves, rarely do they need my help. They, they can see what we're going to do next. So I like to show this. And I, before I show you the numbers, I want you to notice these are healthy patients. These are folks that are not overweight. They do not have insulin resistance. They came from a standard American diet. They're not ketogenic. But if you watch how long it took them to get a really strong Dr. Boz ratio, we're going to show you that the glucose started at 80, went to 70, then into 60s and 50s. When they're in below that, um, I would say below 60, uh, excuse me, below 70, in the 60s and the 50s is when I can have a high level of confidence that they are in gluconeogenesis. Um, I've had lots of people write in about that. When you look at their first, uh, first uh, check, their insulin is starting to decrease when they have a glucose of 80. Um, Glucagon and epinephrine, these are things we've talked about in other, other um, lectures, uh, but they start to rise. By the time you get to those 60s, um, you're going to see their epinephrine and their growth hormone rise. I did a hormone, or I did a, uh, one of the beginning lectures and one of the chapters in the book is how to have human growth hormone, HGH, you know, the, the, the drug that athletes will use to strengthen their muscles, but how do you do this without enlarging your breasts and swelling your sex organs and messing up your endocrine system? And that is, you can do that with a Dr. Bowles ratio. You can do that with a ketogenic diet and then adding uh, time-restricted eating to this. Um, cortisol is, sounds like this bad thing because we see it ruin morning fasting glucoses. But I'll tell you, it's not the worst thing in the world. You need cortisol to respond to stress. You need cortisol to respond to infections. Um, they, they got lightheaded by day five. So again, that healthy um, um, metabolism, uh, these are healthy people. They start out with the standard American diet. And notice these are hours in the first part of the, the, the um, um, chart. What they looked at was, this is glucose milligrams per hour is that first solid line. So that is not what their glucose was. It's how many milligrams per hour were they using. So they had just eaten. Um, right after they ate, that really went down. Um, the glucose coming from glycogen, which is stored glucose, is what that dotted line is. But you get to about the end of that third day or end of, uh, excuse me, the first day, 24, 28 hours, 
um, and you start to see the storage in your liver really decline. You don't really get that gluconeogenesis until you get to the third day uh, or the glucoses that are somewhere in the 60s or 50s. But again, I'm showing this, you this to compare it to people that have been overweight for years, that have had high insulin for years. These were healthy, lean patients. They were not on a ketogenic diet. These were standard American diet, and they fasted uh, for, again, the 40 days is what that, it's a really great study to kind of unpack. So you look at this um, uh, study from clinical nutrition. This was done in 2000. So again, 20 years old. This is not new data. Uh, but you watch to see what happens during the 72-hour fast uh, with these healthy patients. And I think, yeah, this is the, uh, this is going to be the same, similar stuff to before. So glycogen and glucose are what comes out of your liver. Um, again, by 24 hours, you get a range of 61 to 69, and then a, a glucose of 64. By the time you got to 72 hours, uh, you can see their glucose is now coming out of storage. They are not taking any more in. And this is how quickly you can drop that in a healthy, lean patient. What I think is powerful is in those healthy, lean patients, if you were measuring ketones and you were doing a Dr. Boz ratio, they would not drop their Dr. Boz ratio until you get to the third day. 72-hour fast, you can see that their, their insulin was 7 to 13. Again, I, when I do this in the clinic, I love it when their insulin is less than 5. So these healthy, lean patients were not uh, what I would consider a good level of insulin. That stayed just about the same at 24 hours and maybe a little bit less at the 48 hours. And by 72 hours, you finally had a, a, one of them at least hit 5.1 but still quite a range of insulin that did not really correct. And this is just a glimpse to say even healthy lean patients, when we're trying to improve their immune system, you have to be checking both numbers uh, to really understand. Now they did check ketones and you'll see uh, that uh, they didn't have any ketones at the beginning, as you might expect, but over 24 hours they shot up, I think uh, it was, they hit two, yeah. Um, healthy lean patients, they don't have a lot of insulin or, glu or a lot of glucose hanging out in their liver. Uh, enough to keep the glucose um, high on that first one, but boy, by 72 hours, their, their ketones were, were 4.8, and that got them to a Dr. Bowes ratio under 20. Um, there were a few of them that made it into a Dr. Bowes ratio under 20 by 48 hours, but that is the exception. Um, uh, I didn't mean to put this slide in here, but this is norepinephrine. This is kind of fun. Norepinephrine is what makes you feel so good. Some patients say, I want that high that I get when I fast. And I said, well, it, it, you got you to gotta practice making it. You're not going to get it on your first fast um, unless you get clear out to 70. And, and this is healthy people. It took 72 hours to really boost their norepinephrine. But it's where this enlightenment comes from that people say, boy, I fasted and I really feel so much better. I'm like, yes, you do. And we have evidence that um, it really does change in, as you watch um, uh, the, the numbers, but it's mostly at that 72-hour range. So here's, again, 36 hours fasted. These are growth hormone. Um, again, healthy people. These are not overweight people, and it still took them multiple days to really raise their uh, growth hormone. What I recommend for my folks over the age of 50 is to not fast for longer than 72 hours. Using a ketogenic diet, using um, your Dr. Boz ratio, you can see when your bodies start to improve. Uh, I did not want to put that one in there again. Oh, shoot. This is when I laid it over there. Sorry. I, I hope I didn't make that go away. Um, so here's your insulin resistance patient. Okay. So in, it took days to weeks for them to get their uh, fasting glucoses to drop below that 70 mark. So again, I do not recommend that my insulin resistant patients start fasting now until the day the quarantine is over. That's a really bad idea. There are lots of things that can go wrong and access to healthcare is limited right now. Uh, but I'm showing this to you to say, we know that it happens. We know that it's possible. And we know that you'll turn over your white blood cells every four days. But in order to, you only get to build on last, uh, your last set of white blood cells. To take your white blood cells from what Grandma Rose had at the beginning of her cancer uh, to a one that could sustain the 40 days of fasting, it took us nine months. Now, we weren't nearly this intense. We didn't even start blood checking her numbers till we'd been at it for six months. 
Um, I really like this study and use this in my upcoming book where they, they compared obese patients to non-obese patients and looked at who had the biggest change in, uh, I think this fast was 72 hours. But looking, just look at the hormone there of insulin. The biggest drop in insulin is when they're overweight. The biggest rise in the, the glucagon, you know, where can we have some extra glucose and growth hormone really happens to the folks who need it the most. Uh, they are, are folks who are overweight. They have been suffering and bathing their body in inflammation. Their cytokines really are out of whack. And we know that if we can get them to a place where they can healthy, be healthy and fasting, it really does improve their um, long-term... Uh, something must be happening in the background. Long-term uh, growth hormone. There we go. Whew. I'm like, something's happening there. All right, so this is the, again, your keto diet, insulin-resistant patients now. I don't know if you remember that chart where I had phase one, two, and three. Phase one was right after they got done eating. But when you're on the keto diet, which is, again, the reason I'm so adamant about you checking numbers to see are you improving is, what is that phase two? What is, what is it looking at? And you are looking, how did you empty the, glu the glucose in your liver? Um, Again, that stored sugar is called glycogen. And when you've been overweight with high insulin, you locked it inside those liver cells, you locked it inside your muscle cells, and to get it to empty can take a really long time. Uh, that process is evident by looking at your numbers. So this is where I give a lot of credence to those who uh, are, have lost the 100 pounds, have been checking Dr. Bob's ratios, really been looking at how their body repairs um, and knowing that the reason we're doing this is you have been overproducing insulin for the better part of uh, a couple of years. Um, that process of extra sugar, every time there's a more than a tablespoon of sugar in your body, you took these little glucose on my channel. This is what glucose looks like. These are, they're square and they are actually they're rhomboid, um, but they're happy, sad. They're kind of like the seven dwarves. They have all kinds of emotions because glucose can make you feel good, but it all is very short-lived. Uh, its energy is rather wimpy, kind of like burning pine needles in a fire. It's really exciting, but then it crashes pretty hard. And our mood and our energy and our repair process is affected when too much sugar is around. When you take glucose and you say, hey, Mr. Insulin says you need to be tucked into uh, a cell that is... Um, inside the liver and inside the, um, the muscle cells. And that glycogen uh, gets packaged by taking all these sugars, connecting them together, uh, and then wrapping them into what I call glycogen bubbles. <laughs> I have a little bubble of our little glucose guys here, um, I think, yeah. Did I put it in there? Oops, here we go, sorry. I didn't mean to do that twice. Yeah, this is what I meant to do. Well, close enough. So yeah, that little guy in the middle is, a, is glycogen. And glycogen is packaged glucose. Those glucose cannot leave the liver until you get um, your insulin down. So remember, insulin and Dr. Bob's ratio are equivalent. You lower your Dr. Bob's ratio, you lower the insulin. The reason you lose weight with a Dr. Bob's ratio of 80 or less is because you can finally open up these glycogen bubbles and use the glucose uh, and that in and of itself becomes difficult, but you, you get to finally empty the storage that has been there for so long. Uh, when glucose is in the body, uh, we fill it full of these glycogen bubbles. And um, boy, you want to see the most gnarly looking livers. Uh, they are livers filled with glucose, almost like cirrhosis of the liver, which usually we attribute to alcohol. But most of the hardened livers today in America are from sugar, excess sugar that look just like this. As we change, um, I think I meant for that to transition. <laughs> um, yeah, as, you, as the sugars run out, then your body starts to package them into fats. And those are what those little yellow strings are. Then we start putting triglycerides all over the liver and we get a fatty liver. Fatty livers are even more diseased than um, ones filled with glycogen. But that's how it takes that you know, almost two months to empty some of the stored sugar in these glucoses. And that is going to take at least a Dr. Bob's ratio of less than 80 before you can empty it. And that's because it fills with all that fat. That's what happens. When you put ketones in circulation, 
Um, by just being on the ketogenic diet, dropping those carbs to 20, that's when we can start to see a lot of the chemistry changes that not only empty the liver, but this is where cytokines and an improved immune system are calculatable. All right, I think, um, I think this one gets me, yeah, that's the 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet, uh, more than 12 weeks on a ketogenic diet, and we really start to see a huge improvement in those livers. But it's because they're measuring, they're not just guessing that they're on a ketogenic diet, they really are emptying their glycogen storage, they really are using those triglycerides in a way that is a much better plan, and you get a bunch of happy ketones around, is what I'm trying to show you there. Yes, so ketones are known for pouring out the flames of insulin. Um, and I think that's where I was going to stop today on that one. Um, yes, so let me, uh, let me go here, here, and uh, here we go. Ah, okay, so let's see if we can keep my little beautiful flower in. I, I, gotta, I gotta ask the local ladies how they do this because it keeps falling out. And I have frizzy enough hair that it should just stick in there, but it doesn't. <laughs> anyway, bobby pins, I guess. That's what they have to do next time. All right, so I have a couple of things where I wanted to show you. Um, the Let's take away... Um, uh, let's see here. Go, and that's not what I want. Uh, so a couple things. Let's go to um, my Instagram and see if I can take away the ketone here. And where did I put the Instagram one? Here we go. Maybe. Oh, actually, this is the one I was going to do. Okay, so, uh, well, I'll come back to that one. Just give me a second to, here's Instagram. Okay, so when I look at Instagram, what I want you to notice is that um, the, the Instagram uh, is where I post my numbers. One of the hardest parts for patients to really appreciate is that I want my body to be healthy too. And, and I think in the setting of a, uh, a major improvement, um, I can measure mine too. So <laughs> usually you find every week that I have uh, numbers and pretty much all I put on my Instagram are these numbers. So if you need a good list of numbers, it's a great uh, way to say this is the real deal. Some of them are not pretty. Um, and you'll see what happens to me when I hang out in, Ho I was gonna say Haiti, Hawaii <laughs> with family and I'm out of my routine. Um, but that starts today. I'll check my numbers here at the end of the show. But you'll see each, uh, each number is, shows you how long I've fasted. I'm trying to get to a Dr. Boss ratio of 40 or less. Sometimes, like this Dr. Boss ratio of 80 is because I didn't, I didn't measure the third one. Um, or uh, somehow, usually I get to 40. So if it's not posted, it means either I ate before I checked my number, which is a note. I should not do that anymore. I, I've made that mistake enough times. But you look at this red one and you go back to when I started. That was, I'd fasted 18 hours. My ratio was 108. Um, at 26 hours, the ratio was 43. By the time I got to 42 hours, my ratio was 59. And then by the time I got to 52 hours, my ratio was 29. <clears throat> now, this is not always this easy. I mean, I don't, don't look at this as easy. Um, again, fasted 16 hours. My uh, number was 162. By 24 hours, it was in the 80s. By uh, 30 hours, it was in the 50s. Um, and then ratio 58, ratio of 18. And I think um, I might have had a bite of something. When it, or maybe it's in the morning. That, that's probably the next morning uh, where I had it 18 later in the day. But I try not to trust the ones that are later in the day. I like it to be first thing in the morning when I check them. Um, but again, it just gives you a chance to look at what um, I... Uh, do I really appreciate uh, when people are watching uh, the numbers and they tag themselves with, uh, you'll see on here, uh, Dr. Boz ratio. If you put that in the tag, I try to go and support and encourage anybody who uses that hashtag because it is hard. It's really hard. Um, when I look at um, the, let's see here, I want to go here. When I look at um, this continuum uh, is something that I really think is worth just putting a little bit of energy into. 
So again, when you first start out on the ketogenic diet, um, this is part of what that uh, course is that I'm going to teach. And if you want to be part of that, uh, sign up on that, uh, that Toxic Traditions, which is just a, a, a short cliff notes from where I'm at right now in the writing. Um, okay, so n beginner is number one. Where That's the standard American diet, where they eat every two to four hours. Um, but then they choose to be keto, which is 20 carbohydrates or less per day. And within a week or two, they're eating every six to eight hours. Their energy lasts longer. Their metabolism is better. Um, some things that I tell patients is this is chemistry. Uh, you don't have to really do anything but cut those carbohydrates to less than 20. Um, it takes four to six weeks for you to get to phase three. And I tell people, you cannot rush this. Um, I want you to keep eating as much fat as it takes to get to that one moment where you say, oh, I accidentally missed a meal. And you're going to see me unpack that process a lot more in the, in the ketogenic um, uh, class. Once that happens, uh, it's a very powerful transition to now choose. You've got to make a choice here. That's why it's in red is you're going to eat uh, two meals a day. You're going to go from the three meals a day and eat only two meals a day. But I will tell you, it will not feel restrictive if you wait until this chemistry catches you. When I see people skip over, they push and just say, oh, I, I kind of didn't want to eat and I'm, I'm ready to go to two meals a day. Their hormones are not replaced. Their insulin is not improved enough. Their uh, fat-based hormones is why you feel better. And when they skip that, oh my goodness, do they feel terrible. They get into 16-8, they get into what we call advanced 16-8, um, and they don't feel good. They, they think this ketogenic diet is terrible. And I will tell you, it's because they skip over, they push their body to jump uh, past number three uh, when they're not quite ready for that. So if you notice that the, the base, so once you get past number four, five, six, seven, and eight is what I call baseline metabolisms. And that's where you should live. Um, five, six, seven, or eight. Some people never need to go past five. Uh, and I have a couple people, the, the, the star of my upcoming book, really, is he lives at five. And he never really had to do uh, some of the super advanced levels. And he is healthy. Uh, it just took a steady change. And he's ready for coronavirus. And he's 65. I, I have no fear that his body could fight off that virus uh, better than it could have two years ago based on all of his history. Um, I, don't like, I don't like OMAD because people say I eat one meal a day, but I have a snack here, and then I have some nuts before bed, and I have cream in my coffee. And uh, so I walk you through saying, what does 23 and 1 really mean? Um, and then how do you take that to the advanced level? I usually live somewhere between 7 and 8. Uh, I love it when I'm at 8. I feel the best when I do that. And then once a week, I stress my metabolism. I stress my metabolism. This focuses on the hours, like 36 hours, 48 hours, 72. But I really, um, I, I encourage people to, to, um, to use a timer because that is the first step of figuring out fasting. Uh, but really to get your metabolism uh, to, to be a ratio that, that you can be confident that you're improving your immune system with. And it's not an easy thing to do, but it really does, um, it does change how people... Uh, can can stay committed uh, for the long long game, if you would. Um, this is the last thing I was going to go through today, which is uh, the suppress. I had a, several physicians write in saying, "Where is the data on um, cytokines and uh, the ketogenic diet?" So I just want to say thank you for being committed to um, the uh, the the science and and making sure that people do have. Uh, um, their, their research based in science. I know that my coronavirus uh, video got demonetized or whatever that is because YouTube is being very strict that they're only promoting those videos that come from the CDC. And I think that's the right thing to do. I think you're, you're looking for the highest quality evidence and not everybody uses studies when they get on these channels to say, let's try and improve the education. But I like this study. Um, it is... Uh, um, I think this one was the, um, let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. Hold on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, I got, sorry, my, my, my mouse is being a little bit sticky here. Um, today's study, here we go. 
Uh, it is unlocked. Okay, good. So let me try to blow this up because I think it's 2000. I can't remember if it's 2000 or 2002. Let me just really look at that. Um, uh, okay, so I, was trying to th I thought the date was on this one, but okay, maybe it's at the bottom. The point I'm ma making is that if you look at oxidative stress, so oxidative stress is one of those words that lots of supplements use, like we decrease your free radicals and we decrease your oxidative stress, but it is actually measurable and um, it has so much to do with your histone, uh, histone deacetylase inhibitors. Uh, and that word endogenous means that you do it yourself, that um, as much as I use supplements when I'm not feeling well, when I, I've fallen off the wagon and I need to get back on course, uh, your body does about 100 times the improvement that a supplement can do. Uh, so this data comes from what happens in the stress when um, beta-hydroxybutyrate, which is the ketone that floats around in your blood, when you do your finger checks, that's what you're checking. But when it uh, stimulates the production of... Um, uh, uh, of the, the hormones, if you would, the milieu of improvements. So the, I could go through the whole study, but I'm not going to do that. Maybe this is where the, uh, I, I was thinking maybe it's at the end. Let me see if I can get the date so I can get that out of my head and say, oh. So this one was 2013. Okay, not even close to 2000. Good thing I checked. Okay, so um, when looking at this, though, the key thing was the treatment uh, of cells with beta-hydroxybutyrate increased histone acetylation um, at these little bitty uh, receptors, both in a genetic way and in the depletion of some of the ones that you don't want to have around. They go on to talk about specifically looking inside kidney cells, and that's really where I came across this was I was really looking, what can I teach my dad who is on dialysis that every step of the way could uh, gets better if we continue to use a chemistry set that has improvement in his ketones uh, keeping his blood sugar low, and it's not just about putting ketones by drinking them. It's really getting your body to make them because of what happens at a cellular level. Uh, this histone deacetylase part is where the DNA winds around these little um, uh, little thimbles, if you will, to to tightly hold the genetics, uh, the the DNA in the proper place. Uh, free radicals uh, will destroy and and mess up that DNA. When, um, when they have lots of oxidative stress. And they were, they were looking at what is the glucose level and what is the ketone level uh, for a ketogenic diet to improve that uh, immune response and that oxidative stress. And the, this study did a good job of at least unpacking that they, have, they do have evidence of this. This is one of about 40 of the studies I could have picked but I have found, based on viewership, that when I talk about studies, I tend to lose some of the audience. So let's get back to the punchline here, which is what I, uh, let's see if I can go back over to comments uh, and see if we can see the ocean behind me a little bit, maybe, uh, kind of. I'll, I'll, give you a, I'll give you a closer look at what's outside the front step here. So check that out. Uh, oh, boy. Hard to there you go ah, there you go oh my well, hands isn't that cool uh, I'm so happy to be stuck okay so now that I'm back um, I will uh, wrap this up in a summary because I know that I did a lot of talking and I did a lot of like oh what's the Dr. Boz ratio I wanted to shoot some cleanup there because I've had lots of people write in saying what is this um, I've had other people say, did you just make this up? I'm like, no, I didn't make it up. Uh, it is from the studies that look at um, ketones and glucose in ratio, which is called a glucose to ketone index. It is the, the research used to make the protocols for cancer patients and for seizure patients uh, in the ketogenic diet, and then extrapolating that to look at what the autophagy data says. Uh, the punchline I'm trying to get to is you got to measure it. You cannot just guess. Uh, when people call in and say, I've been sick for um, the better part of, uh, let's see if this is actually working. I might have a problem here. Mm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think, let's see. 
Okay, as long as I hope you guys can see this because I it looks like something's wrong. Yeah, so okay, so okay, I've got feedback that says it is working. Sorry, without anybody else to tell me when things go wrong, uh, I move my computer, there's not power plugged in, and that's enough to send it into um, the danger zone here. Um, Without a, an improvement in your Dr. Boz ratio, you can't guarantee that you've got an improvement in your, um, in your system. And that's really what I'm getting at, is that if you look at um, the, the best part of the ketogenic diet is that it isn't about the food. It's about the chemistry inside your body. It's about what we, and I can go through, hundred, I mean, the saddest part about how long it's taken me to write this book is that I keep uh, doing, which I'm sure every author does, is uh, the data <laughs> keeps coming out, or I find a, a study I haven't read, and I spend two days kind of unpacking it, deciding if it should go in the book, deciding what it teaches me, and I love it. Um, but the, the worst part is, is that it will slow me down in my writing. But I'm, I've committed to not reading any studies that I haven't already read until it's published. So I'm on the right track. But when I look at meters, uh, first of all, somebody just said, what meter do you recommend? I do recommend Foracare. Um, I do that unabashedly because I usually live in South Dakota, and the biggest reason strips don't work. You can say, oh, these other ones are cheaper strips. These are pretty, pretty cheap, about a dollar for the ketone strips and about I mean, somewhere between 30 and 50 cents. I don't even think it's that much for the glucose strips. Um, but the key is they are temperature stable. And in South Dakota, it gets really cold and it gets really hot. Uh, and you put that little strip in, and you start to look, and it sends you an error. And you're like, oh, did I do something wrong? So you get out another strip, and you poke your finger, and you put it in there, and it gives you an error. And you do it again, and about six strips later, you realize, oh my goodness, the whole bottle is not working because uh, it, got temp it was affected by the temperature. It got too cold. So that does not happen with Foracare. And I am I'm usually a victim of the cold and the heat, so... Not today, <laughs> but when you look at um, the, the improvement in your white blood cells, and again, today's live was about how can we, can we measure your Im improved immune system? And I would say, yes, you can, but you need a meter. So in the show notes, you can have a, a, a link to this meter. Um, I'm going to recheck my numbers at the end of the show uh, here and show you what they did in the hour. Uh, part of this is to show you, yes, I check my numbers. Uh, part of it's to get you to follow me on Instagram to say you're not alone. That silly little flower. I'm just going to let it stay there. <laughs> um, I, you're not alone. It's hard. You'll see me. I, my numbers aren't perfect. Um, and when I'm stressed, like isolated and braiding my hair because I can't believe I'm stuck in Hawaii. I mean, I'm happy. I'm not complaining. I am not complaining. But, um, yeah, the clinic's closed. It's in South Dakota, and I'm not. All right, so um, I poke my finger, and you can see that their code is set up for this. That blinking little uh, blood drop is really important to, to have blinking before you touch that. The ketones take 10 seconds to read. This is the glucose. It's the exact same meter. You don't have to buy two of them. I just do that because, oopsie, uh, it is faster. And then you, uh, can you see that there's a blinking little drop of blood there? And then you, you get that here. Mm. Yes. So uh, the ketones were 0.9, and the glucose is 92. So it's a little better than it was when we started. Yeah, that Dr. Boz ratio is 92 divided by 0 0.9, and I've learned not to do any of long division on the air because you can make easy mistakes when you do that. <laughs> but it is measurable. That's what I'm trying to tell you. When you look at the Dr. Boz ratio, when you look at your immune system, and you say, if you're going to be confined for two months, let's join together and share um, the journey. Uh, so figure out Instagram. I didn't want to learn that one either, but uh, it's really the only thing I put on Instagram is, are my numbers when I fast. Uh, people say, how long do you stay in the Dr. Boz ratio uh, to get what you want? Um, if you have cancer, when my mom had cancer, we were there for 40 days. That's why she fasted so much. 40 days. Now, she lived, and I think she couldn't have lived had we done it any other way. But in that same respects, uh, if you look at... Um, uh, my goal, my goal is to be healthy. And so I live a ketogenic diet. I try to restrict my eating to one hour a day. Um, I really have cleaned up. My coffee used to be filled with fat. And for you newbies, you have to stay at high fat until you hit that 
uh, moment where you say, oh, I accidentally missed a meal. Like, it's shocking. You think that only crazy people miss a meal. But when you do that, then we can start talking about changing some choices. But so I, I kept my cream in my coffee for two years. I love it. It tastes great. When I'm sad and when I'm having a tough day, I comfort with cream in my coffee. <laughs> so I still do it. But it's not my, it's not what I like. It's not when I get the best numbers. So uh, the rest of the week, I try to have one meal a day. It's a high fat meal. My family, I have teenagers, so we eat together. It's not as early in the day as I'd like it, but I live in a family and it's got sacrifices uh, that I'm happy to give to, to be in the blessed life that we are in. If you look at um, once a week, I fast from this show, which I, I, I remember last week why I didn't fast, because it was raining and I didn't do my show until Monday. And so then I kind of got all messed up and said, okay, now what do I do? And then it was Tuesday or Monday night. And was, anyway, and it's time zone is different. So I'm starting way early in, in the day as the fast. Usually we have our Sunday meal together and uh, then I fast after that. But you can watch the numbers and they're not great. I mean, I'll probably check it right before I go to bed tonight because I'm in different time zones. So it'll be like two in the morning for the rest of the world. Um, and I'll get up in the morning and I'll check it again. And I will show you what my Dr. Boz ratio is. Uh, and I do that just to say I'm as real as you. Uh, I want a healthy immune system. I don't want to have uh, a virus get into my lungs and start whittling away the little cells that make surfactant and collapse my alveoli and have a respiratory failure. Uh, just because uh, I do keto doesn't guarantee that I'm healthy. I have to check my num numbers to be able to have the confidence that I have a healthy immune system. So. Um, the other part that I really have a, a genuine request for is to be the neighbor that you want in your life. Um, you know, as I, I'm a woman of faith, many of you know that, that I have done lots of, the reason I was in Haiti, we do mission work, I do mission work in my own state and in my own community, that um, I believe that it's a time where it is to be the, the hands and feet of, uh, of what our faith calls us to do, which is to genu genuinely uh, be generous in a time when everybody is scared. Um, that our, your brains will work better when your ketones are higher and your glucose is lower. Uh, using your, um, your numbers to show where you're at and whether or not that's coming down, it will lead to questions. Please put them in the YouTube notes, uh, the YouTube uh, videos. I try to answer the questions on YouTube first as opposed to Instagram and Facebook and the website and emails, I answer YouTube first, and I did really terrible last week, but I will, get, I will catch up. Um, I am not, a, um, I'm not uh, saying this is a panacea. I'm also saying it's not easy, that if my mom were as unhealthy as she was at the time uh, of her, when she started keto, I would be very worried about her um, survival of these next two years, where coronavirus will probably infect all of us if you look at the trends. Um, what we're hoping to do is that may your immune system be stronger when it hits you. Um, and you can calculate that. But that means you have to check your numbers. And you're going to need to learn some stuff. So if you haven't listened to the book, the audiobook is a great mental escape. I read the audiobook and I think it turned out great. It's my favorite of all the versions of the book. You can find that in the show notes. Um, but it, it is a great story where you accidentally learn all about the ketogenic diet. And my mom was 71 and she was very sick, very sick. And she wanted to die. Um, that's amazing. She's Mary Poppins. She saved the world and me all at once. It gives me goosebumps to think she wouldn't be here if I didn't master the science behind the ketogenic diet and break it down into little lessons for her. Uh, what is now five, five, five years ago? It'll be five years. Wow, that's fast. Um, and as I do that uh, in that story, you will go from thinking this keto thing is a little flaky to really understanding that there's way more to this than just weight loss. Um, as you process that, uh, when you're done reading the book, if you get the paperback, gift it to a neighbor and say, just read the first three chapters. If they get to the end of the three chapters and they don't want anything to do with it, it's okay. You tried helping them to understand that this doesn't take money, this doesn't take a bunch of uh, supplements, this really just takes education. And may you gain education from a story that changed not just my life, but my mom's life. And I hope to do that for you. So 
Um, the other thing I would love to have comments on is um, suggestions for what you would like to hear during times of... Uh, I, almost, uh, I almost did um, just live answers with my kids. They weren't quite ready for that. But if we're still in Hawaii next week, I might have to have one of them sacrifice and be on the channel with me just to say, what is it about um, the questions that, that people have? So um, as I come up with ideas for the show, I instantly want to unpack another study and show you what it looks like. Uh, but I'd love to hear your suggestions for what you'd like to hear on a ketogenic uh, channel like this. Um, at Dr. Boz, we, we are doing this for life. That's what this next series is about. That's what the next class is going to be about. That's what the next book will be about is not just how did I happen to help my mom through a really dangerous uh, section of her health, but how do you do ketones for life? And I mean that because it really does in, in, enrich your life. You will have a faster working brain. You have less fogginess. You will have, um, it's like you reverse time. It's like youth in a bottle. <laughs> um, but you will also do them for a lifetime. And that's my goal for you is to share how I do it and what are the ways that we see people fall off the wagon and, and you give them a hand and you pull them back on and say, you can do this. All right, I will call that a wrap. It's a little over an hour today. I'm sorry for the extra, but um, I do appreciate those of you that tuned in. And I will stick around a little while, answer some questions on the live, and uh, see you next week. I am Dr. Boz, improving your health one ketone at a time. We'll see you next week. <laughs>